نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما جز نمبر ايت سورة الأنعام آية 111 ولو أننا نزلنا إليهم الملائكة وكلمهم الموتى وحشرنا عليهم وحشرنا عليهم كل شيء قبلا ما كانوا ليؤمنوا إلا ما كانوا ليؤمنوا إلا أن يشاء الله ولكن أكثرهم يجهلون وكذلك جعلنا لكل نبي عدوا شياطين الإنس والجن يوحي بعضهم يوحي بعضهم إلى بعض زخرف القول غرورا ولو شاء ربك ما فعلوه فذرهم وما يفترون In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful ولو أننا نزلنا إليهم الملائكة وكلمهم الموتى وحشرنا عليهم كل شيء قبلا ما كانوا ليؤمنوا إلا أن يشاء الله ولكن أكثرهم يجهلون And even if we had sent down to them the angels with the message and the dead spoke to them of it and we gathered together every created thing in front of them they would not believe unless allah should will but most of them of that are ignorant the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was presenting the truth to people with complete evidences with complete logical proofs but those who did not wish to believe kept arguing in different ways and rejected the message of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam So over here Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is being comforted that do not worry if the people do not believe it is not because you are not doing your job properly you are conveying properly the fault is in these people because the fact is that even if every proof is brought to them even if the angels are sent to them the dead come back to them and tell them to believe in you they will not believe in you why because a person who does not wish to believe then no matter what is said to him it will not make a difference to him why what's the reason the reason is that the truth is not defective the defect is where in their vision The defect is where in their hearts the defect is in the way they look at the truth this is something that's understandable that if a person his angle of vision is not correct the way he looks at things is not correct then what happens even the most beautiful thing can seem distorted like for example if you have something very beautiful in front of you but you close your eyes a little bit you could say that oh it's not that bright Why? Because your eyes are not fully open. You cannot see the beautiful colors that are within it. So to 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 recognize the truth, what is necessary that we look at it correctly also. We look at it without any bias. So these people when they do not wish to believe, then what happens? Even the haq, even the kalam of Allah, even the words of the most truthful man, what happens? They seem to be defective. So the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is comforted you are doing your job if the people are not understanding it it is their fault and thus we have made for every prophet an enemy devils from mankind and jinn inspiring to one another decorative speech in delusion another reason for a person not accepting the truth is what it is their bad company and this comes in the form of friends But in reality these friends are who they are enemies they are misguiders so over here we see that for every prophet there were opponents there were enemies who are these enemies shayateen and these shayateen from among men and from among jinn 
What did they do? That they spoke against what the Prophet proclaimed. Whatever message the Prophet conveyed, these opponents, these shayateen, these devils, they spoke against it. And what happened? The way they presented their falsehood, what happened? This was very decorative. This seemed very beautiful, very attractive. So the people easily got influenced by what the opponents of the messengers were saying, and they did not pay heed to what the messengers were saying. So over here we need to see that if the, the words of the messenger, the words of the Qur'an are evident, the command that has come from Allah is clear, but yet I do not see it being implemented in my life, what is the reason? Is it because I am not willing to accept it? Or is it because my heart accepts it, but I'm not willing to bring about the change because of the company that I have, because of the people that I live amongst, because of the people that I'm influenced by? So we need to see that the friends who are around us, the people who are around us, what are they encouraging us to do? What are they telling us to do? What are they stopping us from? What are they preventing us from? Because our company has a very big effect on us. Our friends, they encourage us to either do something or to leave something. So we see over here one of the major barriers, one of the major hurdles in accepting the truth is what? It is bad company. But if your Lord had willed, they would not have done it. So leave them and that which they invent. And it is so the hearts of those who disbelieve in the hereafter will incline toward it. The fact is that there is a lot of negative speech, negative propaganda against the Qur'an, against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, against the commands of Allah azza wa jal. And there are people who are very easily influenced by this propaganda. And who are they? Allah says it is the hearts of those who disbelieve in the hereafter. They incline to such speech. Because the person who believes in the hereafter, then he knows that what my Lord has said, it is haqq, even if the whole world contradicts it. The one who believes in the hereafter, he knows that what the Messenger ﷺ has commanded, that is the best, even if the whole world goes against it, preaches against it. So it is only people who have no faith in the hereafter who get affected by this false speech. وَلِيَرْضَوْهُ وَلِيَقْتَرِفُوا مَا هُمْ مُقْتَرِفُونَ Their hearts are inclined toward it and that they will be satisfied with it and that they will commit that which they are committing. Because then they don't need to change themselves. It's like somebody is giving them a license. Go ahead, continue what you're doing. You don't need to change. So they're happy with it. Say, then is it other than Allah I should seek as judge, while it is He who has revealed to you the book explained in detail? When Allah has related the truth in His book, then do we need to seek the truth somewhere else? No. Do we need other people to validate that? No. Do we need scientific evidence? Do we need a statement of Aristotle or, or some other famous people from history? Do we need their validation? No, we don't. Why? Because what has come from Allah, that is the truth. And those to whom we previously gave the scripture, know that it is sent down from your Lord in truth. So never be among the doubters. Never entertain doubts about the Qur'an, about the haqq that Allah has revealed. وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا And the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in fairness. The word of your Lord, how is it? It is complete. It is perfect. The Prophet ﷺ said that there is nothing that takes you to Jannah except that I have commanded you with it. And there is nothing that takes you to hellfire except that I have forbidden you from it. So the message that Allah has sent, the word of Allah, the teachings of Rasulullah ﷺ, how are they? Allah says, وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا They are complete, they are perfect in truth. Meaning there is not even a fraction of falsehood in the book of Allah. There is not even a fraction of a lie, of an error in the book of Allah. It is completely factual. It is completely true, 100% accurate. وَعَدْلًا and the commands that the Qur'an gives, they are also fair. They are based on utmost justice and fairness. We think fairness is what? That each person should be treated equally. But that is not, that is not fairness. Think about it. A child, is he treated the same way as an adult? No, there's a huge difference. Haven't you ever seen that when you go somewhere with your child, people don't even look at you. Immediately their eyes go where? On the children. 
It's as if you don't even exist. And then when they're done greeting the children, then they say, oh, how are you? Okay, and then they move on. Right? Why? Because each is treated differently given who they are. A child is more cute, more attractive, more innocent, more loving. Isn't that so? So this is why, what happens? Each person is given the haq that they deserve. Likewise, we see that amongst women, for example, when you look at all women, all women are not the same. There's a woman who is nursing, another woman who is pregnant, another woman who is married, another woman who is single, another woman who is sick. If a blanket statement was given that all women have to fast, would it be possible? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us commands which are based on adl, not equality, but what? Adl, justice. And justice does not mean sameness. Justice means that each is given what they can do. Each is given what they are deserving of. Each is given the responsibilities that they can carry out. The obligations that they can fulfill. So in the Qur'an, any command, whether it is with respect to women, or it is with respect to marriage, or divorce, or mahar, or inheritance, any law which is given in the Qur'an, any punishment, anything, remember, it is based on absolute justice, fairness. لا مبدل لكلماته There is none who can change, who can alter the words of Allah. The law that Allah has revealed, it is unchangeable, unalterable. We are no ones to change it. We do not have the authority to edit it, to review it, to revise it. Whose word needs to be revised? Whose book needs to be revised? A new edition has to come out every now and then. Whose? The book? That is of who? Of people. Why? Because their knowledge is limited. What happens? A research is done, a book is written. After a couple of years, that research is proven wrong, so now the book has to be revised. It needs to be changed. But Allah, وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ He hears all, He knows all. And so, His words are perfect and complete. And if you obey most of those upon the earth, they will mislead you from the way of Allah. So what principle are we being taught over here? The criteria for truth is not the majority. Just because the majority is doing something, that doesn't mean that it is the truth. What is the truth? What is it that we have to live by? What is it that we have to adhere to? What? What do we learn? It is what Allah has revealed, not what the majority of the people are upon. So Allah warns us that if you start following the majority of the people, thinking that they are right, they must be doing something right, there must be something right about it, which is why the whole world is doing it. No. Allah says, if you follow them, they will mislead you from the way of Allah. Why? Because the majority of the people are not upon the truth. What are they upon then? What are they following? إِن يَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا الظن. They follow not except assumption. They're not following the truth. They're not following facts. What are they following? They're following assumptions. Assumptions. Meaning, they haven't seen with their eyes. They haven't heard with their ears. They don't have factual knowledge. They have found traces of some things. Or they think that this is how life is. Or this is what life is about. It's all based on what? Assumptions. And when it comes to assumptions, when it comes to theories, there's a huge possibility that it be true. And there's also a huge possibility that it be absolutely false. Isn't that so? So then, when there's one thing which might be false, and then there's another thing which is 100% true, which one is it that we should go for? That which has a possibility of error, or that which is free of error? Which one? That which is free of error. So Allah's word, His command, what is it? It is, وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا And the words of the people, the ways of the people, what are they based upon? ظَنْ وَإِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَخْرُصُونَ And they are only falsifying. They're only guessing. So what do we learn in this ayah? That the correct thing to do is not what has become common in people. The correct thing to do, the right thing to do is not what has become common in people. Disease. Can disease spread in people? Can it become common? Yes. Now if disease has become common, does it mean that we should also make sure that we catch that disease? No way. Crime can become common in people. Just because everybody is committing some crime, doesn't mean we should also do the same thing 
No. I mean, it seems ridiculous when you think of these examples, but that's exactly what happens in our lives. We think, if five people are doing something, I should also do it. Right? If everybody is doing something, it's become so common, it must be okay. No, that doesn't make it okay. It doesn't make it good. What is good? That which Allah has told us is good. So, our criteria is not the majority, what the majority is upon, because majority is not authority. No matter how much we think like that. But sadly, what happens? We think that what everybody is doing, that is right. If you look at the prophets of Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salam, we learned about his story in the previous ayat, in the previous juz. Was he the majority in his nation? No. He was the only one initially. Right? And then what happened? He was firm upon it. Musa alayhi salam, we learned about him also. Musa alayhi salam and his brother, Harun alayhi salam, even though they were amongst Bani Israel, what happened? Musa alayhi salam made dua to Allah, that, Oh Allah, I have no power over these people. I only have power over myself and my brother. That's it. So, separate between me and my people. I cannot stay with them anymore. Imagine, Musa alayhi salam, being amongst a so-called Muslim nation, he doesn't think that he, he doesn't feel like he belongs to them anymore. Why? Because the Bani Israel outright refused to follow the command of Allah. So what do we see? That the truth is what? Allah has revealed. And the thing is that we have to follow the truth. Why? Because it has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not even you know, do something in the name of religion just because everybody is doing it. You understand? We should not practice something, thinking it to be part of the deen, just because everybody is doing it. Always think, has Allah commanded of this? Has the Prophet ﷺ instructed of this? If they have, then yes, I will do it. And if they haven't, then I will not do it. We learn that in the grave, when people will be tested, the hypocrite, when he will be asked, that who is your Lord? Who is your messenger? When he will be asked these questions, what will he say? He will say, I do not know. But I heard the people saying something. And so I said the same also. I heard the people saying something, so I also said the same thing. So what do we learn? That when it comes to the matter of the deen, we have to use our mind. We have to use our mind. We don't follow the majority. What do we follow? The Qur'an and the Sunnah. Even if it has become the practice of a few people. A few people. That is haq. And forever it will remain haq. And yes, it's very difficult that you're the only one doing something or one of the few people who are doing something. But what happens? Eventually Allah will strengthen you. The Prophet ﷺ in Makkah for 13 years, the Prophet ﷺ tried so hard, but how many people embraced Islam? Very few. Very few. And then even when he did Hijrah to Medina, again, there were people who became Muslim, but not everybody. The bulk of people that embraced Islam was when after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. And specifically after the conquest of Makkah. That is when the people came and accepted Islam. So initially, what happens? When you see the truth, you recognize it. You want to follow it. You have these fears. What are those fears? Or what are people going to say? Or everybody does things differently. Still, when it's the truth, adopt it. When it's the truth, do it. And Allah will strengthen you. Inna Rabbaka, indeed your Lord. He is most knowing of who strays from His way. And He is most knowing of the rightly guided. So eat of that meat upon which the name of Allah has been mentioned, if you are believers in His verses. Even when it comes to the matter of food, don't just eat what you want to. Don't just eat what everybody's eating. Think, is it halal? Is it tayyib? Is it the meat on which the name of Allah was pronounced? Is this the food that Allah permits? If it is not, then don't eat it, even if the whole world is consuming it. Even if they show you research after research that it's good for you, you can have it. It is safe to eat. Now you see there's many things which are, for instance, haram in our religion. They're forbidden. But then what happens? We find out that they're safe. They're safe to do. There isn't much harm in it. But even though people say it's safe to do, still there is going to be harm in it. There are dangers to it. Anything that Allah has forbidden and people say it's okay, 
do it anyway and it has become very common amongst people remember it is still wrong even if these things have entered our books our studies our classrooms when allah has said it is wrong then what is it what is it it is wrong it is not right And why should you not eat of that upon which the name of Allah has been mentioned while he has explained in detail to you what he has forbidden you excepting that to which you are compelled and indeed do many people lead others astray through their own inclinations without knowledge people they lead others astray without any knowledge what do they say but i think it's fine but i like to do it everybody enjoys it No, it's not about what we like. It's not about what we enjoy. It's not about what has become acceptable, what has become the norm, what has become very common. No. What is it that matters? Does Allah like it? Does Allah approve of it? Indeed, your Lord, He is most knowing of the transgressors. وَذَرُوا ظَاهِرَ الْإِثْمِ وَبَاطِنَا And leave what is apparent of sin and what is concealed thereof. Leave all types of sins, whether they are open or they are secret, whether they are public or they are private. Why? Because whether we do it openly or secretly, who's watching? Allah is watching. And who has forbidden it? Allah has forbidden it. So when He has forbidden it, then no matter what state we are in, no matter where we are, no matter what we are engaged in, then we cannot commit that sin. We cannot disobey our Lord. وَذَرُوا ظَاهِرَ الْإِثْمِ وَبَاطِنَهِ Leave all sins open and public. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْسِبُونَ الْإِثْمَ سَيُجْزَوْنَ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ Indeed, those who earn blame for sin, meaning those who commit sin, they know that it is sin, they do it anyway. They will be recompensed for that which they used to commit. This is something that we forget. We think commit a sin, forget it and it's gone no when it's been committed what does allah say sayujzawna bima kanu yaqtarifun they will be recompensed for that which they used to commit whether it is done secretly or publicly allah knows and when allah knows then if a person has not repented if he has not made amends then allah will punish that person The Prophet ﷺ was asked about good and bad, virtue and vice. He said, virtue is a kind disposition. And vice is what evil, sin, al-ism, what is it? It is that which bothers you in your heart. And you don't want that people should come to know about it. Al-ism, ma haka fi sadrik. It is that which bothers you in your heart. And you don't want that people should find out about it. So what happens? Because we don't want people to find out about it, what do we do? We do it secretly. We do it only when we're at home. We do it perhaps only on our phone, in our rooms. But what do we see? Even if a person has done it in that privacy, Allah knows about it. So what we do secretly and with fear of people, then that is wrong. Because you see sometimes we we're not 100% sure, is this okay? right we're not 100% sure is this right is this the right thing to do is it right is it wrong is it halal is it haram is it a sin or is it not ask yourself would you do it in front of other people if you did it before other people would they accept it would they accept it and if they don't accept it then that means it is not okay to do because the definition of sin is what you don't want people to find out about it You don't want them to know that you do it. And this is iman. That a person's inside out is the same. His private and public life, they are the same. And what is hypocrisy? That there is contradiction. There is a huge difference between private and public, between inside and outside. That is nifaq. That a person is one thing on the inside and another on the outside. The Prophet ﷺ said, Sin is that in which neither the heart finds peace nor does it feel at ease. Meaning when a person does it, then what happens? You don't have the sense of calmness and happiness in your heart. No. You are unhappy. Has it ever happened? 
that you do something and then you're, it's, it keeps bothering you, bothering you, bothering you. The thought just keeps coming back into your mind. So when it's coming back into your mind again and again, bothering you, that means it, it was a sin. And when a person does it, then the heart does not feel at ease. Even if those who give verdicts give you a verdict. What does it mean by that? Because sometimes we're doing something wrong and we have a fatwa. Like literally, an official fatwa. People have it. Or five people are telling them, yes, it's okay, yes, it's good. No problem, do it. Even if people are telling you that it's okay, when your heart does not feel at ease with it, then what does it mean? It is wrong. So don't do it, leave it. Because many times, when we want to do something wrong, we will find supporters. Isn't that so? We will find people who will encourage us. If it's not our family, then who is it? It's our friends. If it's not our friends, even if they leave you, then who's still with us? There's people, you know, the global community, right? Over over the internet. You will always find supporters for anything. Isn't that true? I mean, even the most craziest ideas on the internet, you'll find supporters for everything and anything. So the Prophet ﷺ told us, that if your heart does not feel at ease, and if the whole world gives you the gives you the verdict, then it's wrong. Don't do it. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Ittaqil maharima takun a'bad nas Be on guard against the unlawful. What is unlawful? Be on guard against it. Keep away from it. And when you will do that, you shall be the most worshipping among the people. Meaning, you will be the most subservient, the most submissive of all the servants. When? When you leave what Allah has forbidden. So leave all sins, ظاهر and باطن. Why? Because at the end, Allah will punish those who commit sin. Even if people support, yes. Even if people encourage, yes. And if Allah punishes, then the support of the people, the encouragement of the people, how long can it can it help a person? How long can it save a person? Not forever, just for some time. I mean, think about it, the mushrikeen of Makkah, how much they opposed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You know, the incident of Sulh Hudaybiyah, I hope inshallah you start seerah very soon. But the incident of Sulh Hudaybiyah, uh, it's so beautiful, because we see that when the Muslims went to Makkah to do hajj, all right, they camped outside, they went from a different road. Why? Because the, the, some of the mushrikeen of Makkah, they had blocked the roads, you know, with their weapons, to ensure that the Muslims would not enter Makkah. Now what happened? The Prophet ﷺ changed the route. He went from somewhere else to avoid that confrontation. And he's camped outside of Makkah. And the mushrikeen inside Makkah are not willing to let the Muslims in at all, at any cost. And so what happens? One leader comes in, he volunteers. All right, the, the leader of, of Thaqif from at Ta'if, he comes in and he says, let me try to solve this dispute. Another person from the tribes that lived outside of Makkah, he volunteered, he said, let me come and resolve this dispute. People were volunteering to resolve that dispute. But what happened? The mushrikeen were not willing to give up. And what happened? They lost the support of one group after another. They lost the support of one group after another. So what happens? Initially, you feel like you have a lot of support. Yes, I'm doing something wrong. And everybody's encouraging me. Everybody's helping me. I feel really good. But on the inside, the heart is still pinching. It's still telling you, don't do it. Gradually, what happens? A person loses that support. And when he goes to see Allah, then he will go how? All alone by himself. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا And do not eat of that upon which the name of Allah has not been mentioned. When? At the time of slaughter. For indeed it is grave disobedience. It is a sin to eat of that meat on which the name of Allah was not mentioned at the time of slaughter. Well, what about uh, the meat of the people of the book? What about the meat of the people of the book? Even that meat, why is it that it has been made permissible? Because they are meant to say the name of Allah on it. And if they do not say the name of Allah on it, then it is not permissible for us. Just as if a Muslim was to offer you some meat, and he says to you, this is haram meat. This is haram meat. Would you eat it? Would you take it? No. 
What if a Muslim is giving it to you? What if a Muslim is giving it to you? Then what? Would you take it? No. Why? Because even if it's coming from a Muslim, if the name of Allah was not mentioned, it's not halal. It's not. So even when it comes from the person from the from the Ahlul Kitab, if the name of Allah was not mentioned, it is not halal. Allah says, Wa inna hula fisq, it is a sin. It is a sin. Can you imagine eating something wrong, eating something that's not allowed? What is that? A sin. We can commit sin even in the matter of eating. Even when it comes to food. وَإِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ And indeed do the devils inspire their allies among men to dispute with you. And if you were to obey them, indeed you would be associators. Meaning those who associate, partners with Allah. So those who deny the command of Allah after recognizing it to be clear and true, then who are they? They are mushrik. Allah says, إِنَّكُمْ لَمُشْرِكُونَ Then indeed you would be of those who commit shirk. نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم